Corrections Act and subject to, uh, to very severe penalties under the law. So the problem here is when good new technology like this robocall te telephone technique gets mixed up with bad values. That's the problem. It's the concept, it's the bad values, it's people who say the end will justify the means and we don't have to play by the rules. Your being, being here today and the hundreds of others who are gathered across Canada are saying yes, the rules do matter and no, we are not going to take our Canadian democracy for granted. Thank you for being here. Great to see a lot of people come out. I, uh, I came out early to talk to the press and uh, I was a little concerned that uh, it wouldn't be a great crowd like today. I thought people would have other things to do. But obviously democracy is thriving and well. Um, my name is Victor Lau. I am uh, the leader of the Green Party of Saskatchewan and I'm here to bring greetings on behalf of our MP and leader uh, at the federal level, uh, Elizabeth May, who is probably attending a similar rally somewhere in BC. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and be as non-partisan as possible, uh, considering that I am uh, obviously asking people when I'm campaigning to vote for the Green Party. Uh, I've chosen to be part of the Green Party because I believe that party best represents uh, the values I believe in and uh, best represents the new world that we want to see. You know, a world of clean energy, a world that has no poverty, a world that doesn't have discrimination. Um, that is exactly the opposite, I think, of what the Prime Minister is offering us in the next four years and, and onward, if uh, he gets re-elected. Uh, I think we need to take the outrage that we feel today and, and really go back, uh, you know, talk to our friends and family, and, and really discuss politics. I know it's, it's uh, sometimes hard to discuss politics for some people at the dinner table. It's hard to discuss politics with your friends at the bar or in your workplace. But this is very important, and this is why I think this is a nonpartisan issue. It's about a Prime Minister that decided to cheat. It's about a Prime Minister that decided to win an election by using any means necessary. It's about a Prime Minister that doesn't care about what you think, but what his party gets in terms of power. And that, that is the saddest thing. You know, if, if us as Canadians can't stand up and, you know, basically stand up to this Prime Minister and tell him, we're not about to let you get away with this. We're not about to let you get a small fine from Elections Canada, sweep it under the rug. That's what he paid for the in and out scandal. He decided, his party decided to plead guilty and they paid something like 50 some thousand dollars. I mean, th this is a party that fundraises millions and millions and millions of dollars for election. And we need to hold this party accountable. Uh, I remember... I remember Stephen Harper as our opposition uh, leader demanding that Prime Minister Paul Martin at the time during the sponsorship scandal, you know, be held accountable and his party stand up and be held accountable. And to his credit, our Prime Minister Paul Martin at the time called a public inquiry, which then led to the consequences as you all you know. Well, I think it's time we, you know, suggest that phone, the, phone their offices, demand, you know, wherever these people are, the Conservative Party, wherever they are, whether it's in the university, at the riding level, at public events, we should harass them and say, you know what, when you were opposition leader, you demanded accountability from the Prime Minister. I think it's time you stood up in the House of Commons and demanded accountability from yourself and your Conservative Party. Yeah. People know that you're misleading them. Yeah. I, I, I'm really concerned that this is only you know, the beginning of, of a deeper scandal. Uh, if, if, if I was to speak from the Green Party perspective, we see how they're basically ignoring climate change. They're ignoring things like XL Pipeline. They want to do trade at any cost possible. It seems with China now, you know, human rights, what's human rights? It doesn't matter anymore. It's, you know, I'm in power now. Um, it's all about getting what they want. And, and that's, not, that's not how democracy should be. I mean, from the Green Party's perspective, a democracy is about involving people more than every four years. It's about involving people at the grassroots level to empower themselves, to empower their friends and families, and to build the communities that we want into the future. If we allow this Prime Minister to get away with this and, and, and basically sweep it under the rug, then basically, you know, I, I, think, I think it's a shameful day. I, I think Canada will begin more and more to look like the United States. Uh, we've heard from, from the previous speakers how, how bad that can get. Um, I'm, I'm concerned as, a, as an individual Canadian. I, I, uh, I basically volunteer with a group and I, I encourage you guys to go to this website, leadnow.ca. It's a nonpartisan group. We're trying to reach out across to Cana you know, across the Canadians of all political stripes to work together. If we had a proportional system like they have in Europe, this government would be on the verge of collapse. 
no, if, if, if this government was in power with a coalition partner, I think that coalition partner would be feeling very nervous and thinking about pulling their support and it would lead to new elections. But because he has a mandate, a false mandate as we all know, and has a majority for the next four years, he's going to try and sweep this under the rug. I, I encourage everyone to, to believe in themselves today because you guys are the ones that came out, you know, really feel empowered. You're not alone. Uh, you have support from the Liberal Party, from the New Democrats, from the Green Party. Work with oh, whoever you want, but make it a nonpartisan issue and demand accountability from the Conservative Party, especially for your Conservative friends. This is a perfect example of why we can take this and just put it up to them and say, hey, I thought your uh, Prime Minister, your leader was accountable. Where's the accountability now? fitting that we're here in front of a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald, uh, our, our first Canadian Prime Minister, and also the first Canadian Prime Minister to go down in an election scandal. So, <laughs> Stephen Harper, watch out for 2015. Now, some of you will know that I was a candidate in this past federal election in May, almost a year ago by now. Oh, I know. Anyways, uh, in that election, I, I thought I had a wonderful I had a wonderful time meeting with voters, discussing ideas, uh, and having a genuine positive campaign. Uh, I was a little disappointed to find out on election day that certain voters within the palace are riding were receiving automated voice messages from Mo in Moose Jaw and in Regina, uh, ranging from topics such as that I supported uh, child predators having access to girls' washrooms that I was going to raise the price of gasoline 10 to 15 cents a litre, although I wish I had that magic gasoline price power. I wish that was a lucky guess on their, on their behalf. The point being that what these tactics do is to discredit the, the whole process of democracy. The notion that we can have elections for the purpose of determining the direction of our country. That is what a democracy is. The, the, the etymology of the word means the rule of the people. And when we allow this type of malarkey to happen, we're turning into, uh, into a, a government where apparatchiks and, uh, and elites uh, determine the direction of our country. And that's fundamentally undemocratic. And what, what we've seen from this government is not just uh, a willingness to play fast and loose with our election laws, and they have, played fast and loose their election laws, but they've discredited the whole purpose of citizenship and the value of citizenship. And what, what this government does is a lot of insidious, insidious language. They refer to human beings not as citizens but as taxpayers. They, they, they set a, a, a level of, of discourse whether you are with us or against us. And we all know this as citizens. As fellow citizens, whether you are whether you are a supporter of one political party or another, we're supposed to all be in this thing together. Not just yeah. And it's very unfortunate, very unfortunate that we don't have a representative from the Conservative Party. Because there are a certain number of Canadians who supported that party on the election and who do share the values of that party. I don't. But there are, and I hope everyone here doesn't, but there are a number of people in this country who do share their values. And when the Conservative Party takes the position, not only that they can cheat, and that was what that is, cheating uh, at the ballot box, uh, that, and that they can ignore the will of everybody else. A democracy is not just supposed to be a winner-take-all uh, uh, process where if you manage to get more than 50% plus one, then you can run roughshod over the rights and the constitution of our country. 40 plus one. 40, 40, in this case, 40 plus one. In term, and that is, and I have to echo what Victor, Victor Lau said. Where's Victor? Somewhere. He's, he's back there. We do need proportional representation in our government, and it, it's high time, if nothing else, When one party receives 32% of the vote and is shut out, uh, whereas another party receives just over 50% and get 13 out of 14 seats, that's unjust. And it's, and it's high time in our democracy that we bring back those fundamental concepts back. In the context of that, I asked uh, someone I know who's in legal counsel a few, uh, maybe a few weeks ago 
about, you know, we were talking earlier, people have been talking about actions that we can take. And I asked this person, what about what's happening here and what kind of legal action can be taken about this particular issue before the whole thing exploded when I first heard it? I'm going to read the response I got to you. And then I'm going to tell you that there is another action that can be taken. Because of my work with social justice and human rights, I understand the need for confidentiality. I want to put that up front here. And trust. So, what I'm, this is very light. And I don't have my reading glasses on. <laughs> um, first of all, when we talk about robocalls, one of the thing, things I think is very important, uh, picking up your telephone and hearing a machine on the other end has been a big part of this issue. But there's also been voice calls as well. We need to keep that in mind that anyone, there's been a lot, thousands of phone calls from who we don't know telling us things that would make us maybe perceive that we couldn't perhaps vote on election day. Under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Section 3, this is where I'm going, we have the right to vote constitutionally guaranteed. Under Section 15 of the Charter, we have the right to, quote, the equal benefit and protection of the law. That law includes Section 3 of the Charter and the Canadian Elections Act. Pursuant to several cases, a judge must apply, a judge must apply the principles of the Charter when acting as a judge on very light, and I don't have my glasses, on any matter, whether, uh, whether criminal or civil, under the Canadian Elections Act. So, having said that, any of you here, any of you who knows anyone who has received either a robocall or calls that were inappropriate before the election, that may have caused you or people you know to have a perception that, that there was a no opportunity for them to vote, the person I spoke to has um, a, group of, a group of lawyers, I'm not sure how many, but there are lawyers available who are willing to start a class action lawsuit against the government and take this to the courts. Um, and because they cannot be perceived as, um, as going out finding clients, right? I mean, this wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, what I've decided to do was to take part in this, uh, in this um, to action and offer my contact information. So if anyone wants me to pass on that information to someone I know who will be able to do this, um, come and see me and when I go back to the confidentiality issue because of my work, uh, I understand that and there will be a promise on my part, even if you don't know me, that that confidentiality should never be broken. So, if by any chance you feel that this is viable for you if you have a knowledge of anyone or yourself who felt that you couldn't vote or you were being um, coerced into not voting, this is something that you can do. Thank you.